All right, so I've been having a look at the BMW M8 competition. Um, so they do... Okay, so the, the 8 series replaces the 6 series. Such a funny name. What is? The M8? Mate. Oh, mate. Yeah, okay. Mate. I didn't think of that. True. So this is the BMW Mate competition. <laughs> and uh, so they do, uh, obviously, like lower spec. So the lowest 8 series, the lowest spec 8 series you can get is the M850i. Um, and then it goes up to the M8 and then the M8 uh, competition. So t I'll mainly be talking about the competition because uh, it's the the M8 competition is BMW's currently is currently BMW's most expensive car, um, and it is very expensive. Uh, it is. Is it more expensive than an Audi S8? Yes. Nice. It is more expensive than some R8s. Wow. Yeah. Uh, so it is three ninety to four hundred k. And it's 100K more than the M5 competition, which is pretty crazy. Um, and so it's all-wheel drive. It's 617 horsepower. Are seven these prices Australian? Yes. Okay. Um, 750 newton meters and 0 to 100 in 3.2 seconds. So the RSQ8 was 3.8. What you were talking about, um, the Bentayga was 3.9, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so this is 3.2. And that's a... Um, and so... To get an idea of the M8, because I don't know if I've actually seen this. Is this a huge it's sedan? A, yeah, it's a two-door um, oh. sedan. Oh, it's like one of those. So uh, coupe. coupe. It's like a two-door two coupe. coupe yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's got back seats, but there's really only room for kids. Yeah. Uh, and from the reviews I was looking at, it seems to be r trying to rival the 911. Is it a similar shape to... There's a six going around that's also a coupe. Um, it kind of goes around a, six a little bit. Yeah, six series. I don't know. Oh, you haven't seen that? Okay, no. don't, don't worry. Pretend I didn't say anything. Um, okay, cool. So uh, it's a twin turbo V8. Um, and just for reference, uh, the M850i has 520 horsepower. The M8 has 590 horsepower. And this competition version has 617. Um, so a few more. So it's got a few interesting things. I'll run through them. So it's got backlit M8 logos in the headrest. And, sorry, in the headrest. So when you open the door, um, they kind of like come on on the headrest. Yeah. That looks kind of cool. There's like this blue waterfall lighting around the doors and the dash, which we've talked about a few times on a few cars. Yeah. Um, but a cool feature that this has is when you open the door, um, the blue light on that particular door starts flashing red. The idea is it's like a safety thing. Um, for when you're opening the door. And they just wanted some fun programming, cars coming to be past. honest. Yeah, I mean, yeah, may maybe the lighting programmer just wanted to um, yeah. find some cool features. Yeah. Um, so it's got a B&W, which is Bowers and Wilkins um, sound system, which is actually an optional upgrade. Um, so that's the top of the line version. Um, and the speakers themselves have a light in them, which turns on when you've got the stereo on. So they're kind of in the doors. They B and W. B and W. Okay. Is the brand uh, yeah, it's like pretty yeah. a pretty well esteemed brand? It's yeah. it's an old brand, like it's something your parents would know. Yeah. Um. And, uh, and that's yeah. in the BMW. It's in a BMW. <laughs> yeah, true. Okay. And um, it's got like these little lights in the speakers, and they turn on when it's this, the stereo is on. It's kind of weird, but it's kind of cool. Um, it obviously has multiple modes, as all new cars do nowadays. So it's got an M mode button, which is in the center console. And you can flick between just road, sport, and if you hold it, you get to the track setting. Um, and within the modes, you can configure the chassis and the steering, and you can configure the brakes, so the grab point on the brakes. Oh, yeah. How, like, you know, if you're, uh, the way you drive, you might want to, you know, be harder on the brakes or uh, yeah, yeah. less hard or whatever. You can change the engine. They love customization on the BMWs, hey? They've totally. always been super into configuring it exactly how you want to. Exactly. And for 400 grand, maybe you'd expect that. And yeah. uh, the drivetrain, you can make it fully rear wheel drive or all wheel drive um, in track mode. So uh, then within track mode, you can create two presets. <laughs> yeah. And the idea is there's M1 and M2 and they're on the butt, on the steering wheel. Uh, kind of where your thumbs yeah. Are. yeah. The idea is you might uh, have like highway is like M1 or track is M1 yeah. and then like windy back roads is M2 and it yeah. might change how soft the suspension is or whatever it is. So you can have two different settings, um, you know, with bumps, without bumps. On yeah, the road, yeah, yeah. So that's kind of cool. Um, and um, it has gesture control, which is something I have not <laughs> seen in a car before. <laughs> sounds like Neo. Uh, yeah, it sounds similar, right? So um, 
if you want to turn the volume of the radio up, oh my gosh, you can where the infotainment screen is, you can just spin your finger like this. Uh. And it turns the volume up. It's <laughs> almost like more this. effort. Yeah. What if you miss yeah. the spot that you need to do? I'm not saying it's a good thing. Um, <laughs> and it has another gesture. It's where I, You've got to learn these gestures too, right? So then there's another gesture. If you do a thumbs up and then turn it to the side and in front of the infotainment screen, do like this. It starts doing a power slide. <laughs> it starts. <laughs> it skips to the next radio station uh, or yeah. skips to the next track. Wow. That sounds like hard work, yeah. Um, it's not a pressing one button. Yeah, it's definitely definitely a lot harder than just pressing skip on the steering wheel. Yeah. But anyway, <laughs> um, it has climate control rules. Oh. So I really, really like this. Oh, yeah. Um, so this is the feature of like uh, if the temperature is below X degrees automatically turn on heated seats, uh, automatically yeah, put yeah, air yeah. on this, yeah. you know, all those kind of things. Yeah. The idea is uh, the person who's driving the car doesn't have to change anything. Yeah. Um, and then along those same lines, it has um, a setting called Caring Car. Caring Car. Which are uh, two presets that you can just select. Yeah. Uh, one of them is called um, Vitalize. And, it, and both of these presets adjust the lighting, the climate control, and the music. And this particular one called Vitalize activates the driver. And yeah, it, puffs, yeah. it puffs the air yeah. in little puffs towards the driver. And it changes the music <laughs> to something that yeah. activates the driver. Uh, yeah. an, the second one is called Relax, which is the, the other option. And this de-stresses <laughs> the driver. Which, yeah. Sorry, the driver. And yeah. it so plays so sleepy, some they specific tree. music. And so <laughs> the idea is, as a driver of the M8 competition, do I want to... Uh, I want to relax. So do I want to change the settings of the aircon? Do I want to change the music? Do I want to change all their things? Or do I want to just click a button that says relax? Yeah, yeah. It's, you know, it's like a preset on a massage chair. It's quite funny, yeah. Um, and so that's a few Innovative. interesting things. It has a um, drive recorder. This is a simple piece oh, of tech, yeah, which yeah. Um, hasn't been included in a lot of new cars recently, but uh, we should start seeing soon, which is just a, a, both a manual and an automatic dash cam. So you can manually set it or you can set it to automatically record. Every uh, time you don't you have to get some aftermarket. So thing. you don't, yeah, because it's yeah. ugly, right? Yeah. It's taken them a while, um, but they finally got through that. It's like back when the phones didn't have a uh, flashlight on it, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so if you invest or own some sort of dash cam company, you might want to get out of that business. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, so I'd say, Increasing from the technology you were talking about in regards to um, beefing up the suspension on the side where you're going to have a collision. Yeah, yeah. They have side collision warning with steering us with sorry with steering intervention. Yeah. Right. So uh, it automatically steers away from anything that's going to hit you on the side. Yeah. Um, so if you're going to get T-boned, it will try and steer away. Yeah. If it's a car merging over or whatever. That's kind of cool. Yeah. It has. Um, Can you break your wrists doing that? I don't know how like abrupt it is. Well, yeah. If it. Well, if someone's about to hit you on the side, you would want a, an abrupt, sti abrupt yeah, steering assist. I, I agree. And if you've got your fingers in the steering wheel, yeah, you could um, break. Could break a finger. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, anyway. yeah I agree. Um, it might not be abrupt. Maybe it's just to lessen the impact or something. Yeah. Um, it has. It does have obviously some sort of um, automated driver system. So it's got a. It's got two parts to it. It's got a camera which faces the driver in the um, cluster, and it just focuses on your eyes and and determines whether or not you're focusing on the road. If you are, then it allows um, the automated driving system to um, act, and it just drives at speeds under 65 kilometers an hour. So the idea is oh, yeah. it's traffic jam. It's your traffic jam assistant yeah. is the way that they market it. Um, and then above that 65 kilometer an hour speed is just adaptive cruise like every other car. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then just a few other things. Um, it has... Uh, uh, quite a deep boot. Uh, the idea yep. behind that is um, literally for golf Bodies. club storage. Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry, yeah. And golf clubs. <laughs> <Bodies>. <laughs> and then specific to the comp, uh, the competition version, is some specific wheels, which you'll also find on the competition M5. Um, some, uh, like a competition badge underneath the M8 on the back, which looks really cool. It's in black. And it actually has a carbon fiber roof, which uh, looks awesome, maybe slightly lower as a center of gravity and allows it to handle a little better. So, um, all in all, really, really cool car. It's, it's somewhat of a niche market in regards to just being a two-door coupe for 400 grand. Um, that and only golfers want it. And, yeah, maybe the market is, you know, because I was going to say you could buy a lot for 400 grand, right? Yeah. You buy a supercar yeah. for that. Yeah. You buy an Audi R8 for yeah. that, but you can't really get your golf clubs in it. So, maybe the market is the mm. older demographic who want a car that's going to be exciting. 
and still be able to put golf clubs and stuff in the back. Circling it's, back it's like a GT to, car. Uh, yeah, circling back to that um, setup stuff, I was actually watching one of the episodes of Top Gear just yeah. before um, Jeremy and Richard and James left. Yep. And uh, it was one where they toured Italy. Yep. And it was really interesting because they, um, it was one of their special episodes kind uh, yeah. of thing. Yeah. And Jeremy was setting up a BMW M3. Oh, M4. It was the f- maybe the ah, first year that they had the M4. Cool. Yeah, yeah. He was setting it up and he was saying that they had all these sport functions yeah. and all that kind of thing. Yeah. And the sport function made the car so razor sharp and so silly. Yes. That it was like impossible to steer it because it was like. Really? He said that the steering wheel was like an on and off switch. Wow. Because it was just like immediately full lock yeah. or nothing. Yeah. And so wow. he said that he set it up to sports suspension, yeah. um, had the full sport mode on, except for the steering, which he left on full comfort. Yeah. And then with full comfort steering, he could precisely wow. drift, oversteer the car Interesting. because it had so much give before it started moving yeah. the wheels kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. So he could perfectly set up the car in a way which made it easy to drive there on a go. track. Yeah. So yeah, it was funny that the more comf- he went for the most comfort steering there. True. But lucky they had that option because if they had have just made it a preset that you couldn't change, yeah. then obviously he would have had some bad reviews. Yeah, because if you have an on-off switch for a track car, it's like, how are you going to specifically hit an apex? I don't know. True. Maybe he's just an idiot though. So No, I feel like he knows. He's driven a lot of cars. He's, so. he's, pro- cars. he's, pretty, he's pretty smart. Yeah. So there you go. That's the M8 competition. Great car. I would have it. Wouldn't pay for it. I'd have it for free. It's not something I'd purchase, but yeah, cool car. Yeah, I'd have it for free. Yeah. That's my conclusion as and well. And I'd probably sell it and buy an RS6. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, RS6, yes. So good. Yeah. Cool. Fit a lot of golf clubs in an RS6. You would. And a bodies. And that is a wrap. Thank you for listening to HQLA. It's uh, it's th- the more income you make, the more power to you. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> good to know I'm not the only one who messes up the outros. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>